crow can carry a soul back from the dead to seek justice and put the wrong things right. You move, you're dead. I'm dead. And I move. Brandon Lee. It's not a good day to be a bad guy. The Crow Rated R. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of the Movie Dogs Show. Here, of course, on the Movie Dogs channel. I hope that everybody had a wonderful Halloween. Uh, I want to take time to thank everybody for checking out the horror edition of the Movie Dog Show. Uh, that was a that was a hell of a ride. I've never done eight episodes in a succession before, and I managed to get it all done before the month of uh, November came to, upon us. I um, um, also want to thank those who had joined, uh, who has uh, subscribed to the channel during that time. Got a good. Uh, Good rise of uh, subscribers, folks. I want to thank you all for doing that and those who liked and just shared their thoughts on the um, live chats and the um, and the uh, comment section down below. Um, I want to talk about this movie. I've been wanting to do a review on this movie for the whole, God, almost eight years that I've been doing this channel. Um, the Crow, released in 1994, May of 1994. Um Next year will mark its 30th anniversary, which is, God, it's hard to believe. Um, it was directed by Alex uh, Proess, if I'm saying that right. He was also the director of another great movie from the 90s, Dark City. Highly recommend that. It was based off the comic book by James Omar from uh, uh, 1989. Um, the book was done out of sorrow and pain as much as it emutes as you read it, uh, Obar's fiance was killed in the car accident and it prompted him to inspire him to write this book. Um, of course it got turned into a movie like many comic books, you know, around that time in the nineties, a lot of indie comics were kind of getting looked upon and, and new labels were forming and the crow was no exception. And then it got picked up and, uh, James Obar was very, uh, inputted into the, uh, making of this film um the uh there's a lot of things i'm going to cover in here you know personally and personal memories and um also when it, what i got out of this film uh sadly during the filming of this movie its star brandon lee who was the son the only son of legendary martial artist bruce lee was tragically uh shot in this film, um, the uh, it was just it it was just a, 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 a stupid mistake that really shouldn't have happened. Mostly due to a little bit of neglect, timing, budget cutting, and rushing. And unfortunately, things didn't get looked upon as well as it should have, and it ended up costing. Uh, a life. Um, sadly, uh, the character from Boy, played by Michael Massey, uh, was the man who was unfortunately the trigger man. Sadly, he uh, uh, Brandon Lee was in intensive care for a while, and then you know he didn't survive the uh, the gunshot. Unfortunately, for the actor who 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 pulled the trigger, the man took a year off from acting and just you know. Lived in guilt for a while, for a long time, and he, in a 2005 interview, he ended up saying uh, the only inner time he ever really, I think it was an Access Hollywood interview or Inside Edition, one of those magazines. It's the only time he I ever seen him, um, and I just recently saw the uh, interview after all these years. It's the only time he ever mentioned or talked about it publicly, and he um, still had nightmares about it. Um, but he managed to, you know, pick himself up, and you know, I'm sure with therapy and and preservation, uh, preservation, um, self preservation, and strong willpower, he got himself back up, and he moved on with his life. He was able to move on, and uh, got married, uh, had two kids. Sadly, he passed away from cancer back in 2016. 
But um, I was happy to hear, though, that he had a, a life after the incident. I mean, that had to have been, you know, God, that had to been hard on him. But um, the, the movie itself, of course, the plot surrounded by Brandon Lee's character, who Eric Draven, he and his fiance were uh, murdered on uh, Devil's Night, which is Halloween Eve. And a year later, he got to come back and revenge the death of his self and his, uh, his fiance. And, uh, they were, you know, do the power of the crow. Um, and thus the name of the crow. Um, but again, you know, it was the movie itself really shows a lot of, uh, how to deal with loss, what not to deal or not the, the ways of not dealing with loss, redemption, um, death, Justice uh, through any means, whether you violence or through the through the, through the threads of justices of the justice system, and also moving on, having to cope, and then learning to move on, which I have done in my life um, many times, uh, not successfully all the time, but you know, you you, you get my grip. But um, the the movie was brilliantly. Brandon Lee's performance was out there. I, I really think that, you know, he would have shot to the moon when it comes to this. I mean, they were going to make more sequels with Brandon Lee when it came to this movie. And I could have seen that happening. And I could have seen Brandon Lee writing the success of these movies and becoming a, a really big star. It, it is sad. Just like his father was right there to get on that pinnacle when it came to, uh, the enter the dragon um you know he he got that big hollywood deal and and it was going to be a great movie regardless of whether he lived or died and it was and sadly he didn't live to see that success and brandon lee was very much praised by this movie this movie actually was going to be distributed by paramount and paramount was going to do it direct to video and then after upon the death of uh, brandon lee <laughs> paramount backed off and miramax Jumped in, threw in an additional eight hundred million on a already to that would make escalated up to a like a thirty two million budget, which was very low key for a comic book movie at the time. It went on to make became a sleeper hit. And went on to make ninety four million dollars, um, which is not too shabby back in them days. But again, the the cast itself, you have uh, um, Michael Wincock who played one of the, he just. Played top dollar, and with that raspy voice, he just you know had kind of like a southern charm kind of accent to it as well. He was just so great in this movie. You, you can find him in so many other movies, especially Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and and so many others. Michael Wincock should be should have been right there up front in 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 the public eye. Um, Byling, those who knew a lot about. <laughs> Pop culture and, and the celebrities that you don't know how people are celebrities in the two, in the late nineties, early two thousands. She was in the front run of that. Uh, Rochelle Davis, who played the character Sarah, who I actually spoke with on MySpace. Those who don't know, MySpace was a precursor to Facebook, but better. Um, she had a she was, had a public forum talking to people on the anniversary of Brandon's death at the time, and this is like. Uh, I think it was like the 15th anniversary or something like that. But, you know, I actually got to speak with her and and it, it was pretty cool. She had some pretty decent stories that I can remember about how gentle and nice and sweet Brandon Lee was towards her. Um, David Patrick Kelly, those who are fans of the Warriors, you know, he's the same guy that had the bottles clinking them together, yelling out, Warriors! Come out and play. That's that guy. And he played uh, T-Bird, who was the leader of the gang that was responsible for uh, Eric and Shelley's death. Um, you, uh, Tony Todd, those who uh, know Tony Todd, he's Candyman. He was in here. He played a character, uh, Grage, or Gage. Um, and then there, Ernie Hudson, he played Sarbert Albright, who was a uh, supporting character. He Played the part perfectly. He was, wouldn't say the comic relief, but his his presence really 
lightened the mood a lot when it needed to be in these films. And, um, again, uh, it was just, um, just one of those great things. I mean, they, one of the, it was also for me, the introduction to a lot of CGI and what CGI really should be used for without having to use every single scene to be CGI. Um, in situations like this, they used a lot of, uh, scenes where Brandon was walking in the, um, in the alley during the rain. And they took one of those scenes and put him in walking into his apartment, abandoned apartment. Um, because, you know, he wasn't, uh, you know, they couldn't, you know, he was gone by that time when they were doing the reshoots for the, those apartment scenes. So they had a, his stand in who was a stunt, uh, his stunt double stand into him for a lot of the, uh, missing, uh, footage that he was part of. But, um, I have to say one of the, th the things is that it, it, they were able to really sculpt the film amongst you know, the tragedy that they were handed to him. Um, again, I still think this film was going to be a hit regardless if Brandon Lee had died or not. I know a lot of us went there for the morbid curiosity. Um, I had just seen Brandon Lee in Rapid Fire on pay-per-view. It just premiered maybe about a month before. And then I watched it. Um, if you want to know what pay-per-view is, it's kind of like what streaming services are now. It's a precursor, but, um, it was, uh, it was weird because just a few days I'm reading the newspaper that Brandon Lee is gone and it was just, wow, kind of really kind of, as a young kid, you just don't get that when it comes to the concept of death, it kind of really mind boggles you in, in a lot of ways and. Because you're not supposed to think death because you're young and you're supposed to think life is infinity. And so I mean, most kids should, you know, enjoy life and live moment like it's never, you know, like it never should. And I mean, when you get older, of course, you got to take, take things for granted and live, mo live the moment and but cherish the memories and and embrace the coming days that are to be. Um. But um, one thing I've taken away from this film was the memories that I got seeing it that night. Um, I saw the special midnight showing. Got to see. Got that advanced ticket. Um, I took a young lady with me. Uh, her name was Helen. Um, the reason why I mentioned this is because, you know, I had just gotten uh, over a relationship just about a month or two prior and I was with this young lady for two, about good two years. And I had, I thought we had had our, our, our lives planned out and she didn't think so. And I was devastated. I was just completely destroyed and heartbroken. Um, I really haven't discussed this publicly with many people, unless those who were close to me at the time that, that know me now still. But, um, I had a nice night and it was, you know, it was just because I'd known Helen for many years in primary school and middle school. And, and I just, you know, one day I asked her, Hey, you want to go see the crow? And she's like, absolutely. And, uh, I, it was just nice. You know, I was, you know, I was happy that she even said yes. And I presented her with a, with a rose, like I would do with anybody that I would go on a date with. Um, and you know, I was just, it had a nice night. It was nice, enjoyable evening with somebody who was a really nice person too. And also, I, I felt a little bit uh, felt good that um, you know, I <laughs> I passed off as somebody's uh, dad and everything because I, I snuck in about three or four kids that uh, you know, they gave me money and asked if I'd sneak in because they really wanted to see the movie. And you know, it, there was nothing really bad that I would think that would pay them. They were probably like maybe no more than 15 at the time, you know, I was 17 at the time. So, but, um, again, it was a fun night. It was very, one of those moments in, in, in my, um, when it goes to movie moments and movie memories that I always refer to, it's one of my favorite moments in, in going to a movie and, and, you know, you don't get much of those. You, know, you got to cherish that, especially when you're going to a movie to enjoy a movie. 
um, on the big screen. But um, I, I that year, I, I had got a lot of Chrome memorabilia and everything from the video store. I had had the poster, which I, re, uh, a couple years ago, had had to uh, sell. But I had the video poster. I had it matted and always had it on my wall for the longest time. And I had this big cardboard cutout of Brandon Lee from Rapid Fire. And on the back of it was another movie, but I turned it around and painted it all black and put a bunch of other crow, uh, made another crow poster. That was a marquee, like a you know big cardboard marquee that you see in the theaters. Um, that was, uh, I had that for the longest time. And I, as a matter of fact, I ended up giving the whole thing to another friend of mine named Christina. How you doing, Christina? I'll tag you in this video on Facebook. But, um. Again, um, I, I had a real fun time, and when I talked to uh, Helen some time ago, she remembered it because um, I posted, you know, something about the crow about a year ago or so, I believe. And she she remembered that night, and I was very shocked. I'm like, you really remember that night? I thought I'd be the only one. She goes, No, I went, you, you know, I went to a movie with a really nice guy, and that made me feel real good and everything. That I was, you know, I, I made somewhat of a nice impression on somebody that. My kindness and, you know, being a gentleman, which some people will call bullshit that I can be a gentleman from time to time, folks. <laughs> but I had an absolute blast. And um, on top of all this that I got from the movie, though, is that you really, you, you, if you can experience loss, heartache, and, um, you know, you, you're going to want to find redemption in, in, in your inner self and, and to be able to move on. Um, I'm not saying that one year, about a year later, exactly a year later, the following May of 95, my mother passed away due to a long battle with cancer. And uh, that was that was a very rough year. You know, matter of fact, it was a very rough couple years after. I'm not going to lie to you, folks. And, um, uh, things that I, if I can take back and be able to d go back in time and dust myself off after my mom's death, I really would uh, be practicing what I'm preaching right now, folks. Just, and I've since then lost many more people in my life, but you got to learn to move on, you know. And, and I, I'd seen that with my brother's uh, widow. She, she herself, you know, dealt with the loss of my brother and. You know, she managed, though, to herself be able to move on, and she's been remarried and married to a really great guy. He's really great to my nephew, and I can never be more appreciative of that. So, but folks, remember, you know, when you watch this movie, don't look at it as just a comic book adaption to, to the big screen. Look at it as, you know, you got to understand how this character feels, you know, you know, even though he's going about it the violent way. He is getting his form of justice. He's been given a second chance by some supernatural spirits that uh, allow him to be able to do just that. Uh -huh. But again, folks, um, I can't say no more much more about this movie than I already have. It's in my top five. I love this movie. I don't know if I should be remade or not, which they've been talked. There were sequels that came after this that was not that good and a, and a pretty decent TV show that was on for about a season. But um, again, folks... Um, it's one of those movies that it, it just stands the test of time, and I introduced it to my oldest, and he absolutely loved this film. Absolutely loved it. So it's going to find its audience as time goes on even more. Um, hopefully it'll be one of those classics that will pop back up from time to time. Well, what's your thoughts, folks, on this uh, on this movie? What's your favorite memory about going to the movies and seeing this film? Did you see it in theaters or did you see it on uh, home video? Leave that thought and those uh, those stories on the comment section down below. Don't forget about my subscriber. Uh, again, thank you all for who subscribed this year. My sponsors, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. And again, folks, thanks again for a great month of October. Let's kick it into overdrive next year, folks, okay? But uh, again, I want to thank you all. And uh, I thank you for letting me share my uh, my thoughts on this film and also the fact that um I mean there's not a favorite part in this movie this whole movie is favorite to me I don't have just a favorite part I love this whole movie so 
Just think about that. That's how good it is. But again, folks, you know, always you got to move on. Life, life throws you a curveball. Take a swing at it and keep swinging. All right, folks. That's all the time I got for the Movie Dog Show. Again, hit that thumbs up, share, share away, and again, appreciate your all support. If you haven't yet, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Please keep on watching, folks. Bye.